symposium, so this time not at the symposium, this time at the uh, quantum technology uh, quantum technology community meeting. So I'm really uh, glad and happy that you are here in Oberkochen. Special uh, spe special thanks certainly to to Tomaszko Kalako. Uh, we are it's very grateful that you brought the meeting to Oberkochen. For all of you, I know that I mean Oberkochen is not necessarily the center of the world. So I mean you had to travel. Uh, we know it's it's not easy. Uh, to be reached, actually, and it's not like like a metropolitan uh, metropolitan airport. But still, I think what you can see, the weather is always fine. Uh, you get not undisturbed. That's also a good if you want to work. That's a good place to work. Um, but also, I think many of you probably had a chance yesterday to to be part of the symposium, uh, the meetings, the program, uh, the networking. Maybe also a little bit of Zeiss experience which you, which you had there. So I hope that compensates a little bit for the for the extra travel. That you have been having to get here. Um, anyways, we love to, to have you here. Again, maybe talking about uh, the symposium and, and, and your job today. I, I'm convinced you have a tough uh, day actually in front of you, and I'm sure things we talked about yesterday in the symposium will also be topics on today's agenda. Um, the voting actually yesterday was Europe is in a great position actually, uh, in a great position to commercialize quantum technology, but China is right next, you know, so it's, it's really about speed and about intensity in the end. And we also talked a lot about uh, the permeability between industry and science, which I think is really important to get speed. And from that point of view, I think you will have an intense day today, a lot of work to do. And I don't want to stand now between, well, uh, uh, greeting as share between, between you, or keep you from working, working. Again, thanks a lot for being here. We, we, we are really happy to be your host. If, uh, Tomaszko, you need any more support, please let us know. We are here. And otherwise, I would wish you a very fruitful meeting. And, uh, well, have a great day. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Dr. Simon. Thank you very much, Thais, for having us here today. So, today is a busy day. And, uh, well, uh, I start, I'm happy to start it with a slide in my favorite color, which is pink. Um, and there is a reason why I have this slide here. I hope this thing works because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can present you the new logo of the quantum flagship, which hopefully is coming here. A little bit dramatic. Uh, <clears throat> so we have actually, I will present that also later. So we have a new logo because we have also a new website which we launched yesterday. Uh, the address is uh, qt.eu, and I will show that later. And I'm proud to say that I have the shortest email address in the world, which is t at qt.eu. Shorter is impossible. And <clears throat> well, this is why we, uh, the reason is because we wanted really to put together some uh, instrument for us all to converge and produce something together in order to give the future direction to the, uh, to the quantum flagship. And so I am going to detail that. First, I want to show that this is not just a static thing, but of course there is some dynamic dimension to it. And then we come to the uh, uh, title slide, in which we are going to discuss, uh, well, essentially what we are going to do here today. So <clears throat> the purpose here is uh, to share, I am going to try to share all the information that is available to my knowledge as to what is happening with the flagship and also all the information about what we as a community, and a com with the word community, I mean scientists and industry, yeah, together, what we can do in order to give the right direction to future developments. At the same time, I am going to explain the different pieces of the context. So until now, it was just the framework program Horizon 2020. Now it is getting much bigger than that. And I would like as much as possible for everybody to share this information in order to see where the different pieces are going to fit of the activities that we're going to have today, because we have several workshops, and they all fit into a document. So the output will be this document that you have already received in draft, on which we are going to, uh, to be requested to comment further in the future. And so what I hope at the end of my presentation you can get is really the whole context as much as possible and how you can contribute to steer it towards the future. So here is a, a very simplified slide, which some of you have already seen, a very, very simplified slide of what has happened in the past. I'm not going to go through each step in detail, okay, because that would take a lot of time, but somehow this is what was the preparation until we came up to the um, Halleville Steering Committee <coughs> report. 
And actually, some of my colleagues in this country, they think they have a, a preference for order, and they feel a little uncomfortable with this slide, so I put, for, my, for the sake of my German colleagues, in a slightly more ordered way. And here is a nice linear timeline. Uh, and somehow, now is spring, so proposals are in. Evaluation is going on this week, actually. Uh, um, we are not going to have uh, uh, high-profile officials from the, from the Commission because they are all uh, committed to the, um, uh, to the review, which is taking place right now. And now the question is what comes next. Yeah? So <clears throat> the timeline is this one here. So essentially, in parallel here, I'm highlighting that we have the um, Quantera call, which has uh, been finished. And next week, we have the kickoff of the first of the Quantera projects from the first call. I'm very happy that the Quantera coordinator, Silvia Kostka, is here with us today. She will moderate one of the sessions today. In parallel, national initiatives are developing. And I can tell you that yesterday night, you know, in our meeting of the quantum coordinators, uh, quantum community network, which I will explain again later, I learned uh, about yet more national initiatives, for instance, in Romania and in Croatia, which are really uh, taking place right now. And then, of course, the last uh, uh, line is uh, the uh, flagship uh, European call line in which you know, uh, several of you have been participating and this is going on and the projects are going to be announced uh, in the summer. And I have rented the uh, Vienna Hofburg for a nice kickoff meeting uh, in, on the 29th of October. Okay, please mark already that, that date. Um, with the commissioner and with the, you know, very, I mean, all the also high level decision makers and a couple of commissioners probably. Um, in order really to you know, have a, a great start and prepare for the next stage. So the purpose here is we think about now, you see, this is the present, what has happened in the past, now we think about the future, and the future is what happens after 2021, what happens after the ramp-up phase, how do we shape this? Because the way in which we shape the current call that has been just closed is over the previous years with our roadmap, with our community work, with our coordination actions, and now the coordination action that we are having now which is the QSA, the Quantum Coordination Action, we'll introduce that later, is taking care of what will be the next step. So here is the uh, High Level Steering Committee report, which was the basis for the current call. And for the people who like to take pictures of uh, slides, here is the reason to take a picture, because then you can download this with this QR code, the full PDF. Many of you maybe have already seen it. And the point is, OK, based on that, what is the current status and what will happen? This is a, a picture which probably you have also already seen, which is the structure of the current call. And it's important to underscore that, of course, most of it are application areas, communication, computation, simulation, sensing, and metrology. There are, you know, the uh, uh, horizontal topics on which we also are going to have workshops today, which go across all the lines. And there is a basis of basic science, which, of course, is not the majority of the flagship, but it is a very important component there. And now the point is what's around this, okay? So essentially we have uh, those five areas are the five areas of the call, which is currently being evaluated. But now the question is what is really coming next? And what is coming next is first, what happens after the ramp up phase? So what will be the contents of the call? In the uh, High Level Steering Committee report, we have milestones also for the future six and 10 years but we do not have enough level of detail to define the next calls, which are going to be published in a couple of years. So the strategic research agenda working group, uh, which is going to be established by our coordination action, and the corresponding breakout sessions, which are going to have right after this one at 9.45, I think, they are going to uh, exactly delve into that and start the discussion what should be in the future. And the responsible person for that is Rob Pugh, and he will give a presentation after me uh, in a moment. But then there is also the question, what is around the flagship? Okay, What is around, let's say, this first call that we have? What is coming after? So, <clears throat> well, one important word to learn for all of us, maybe also those of you who are not yet familiar with that, is the word missions. And the reason is that Commissioner Moedash, who is the Commissioner for Research, and he is <clears throat> you know, looking for sort of new ways, new catch words to increase the budget. So some people say, oh, why did Moedash come up with this, with this idea of missions? Because there is Brexit, the budget for Horizon 2020 was 80 billion, and so there is a danger that due to Brexit, people say, oh, let's cut it, you know, the Brits are out, so it will be, I don't know, 70 or maybe 65 billion, okay? Commissioner Moedash wants to defend that, 
And the current proposition is to have 120 billions, which would be very good for us. I will explain why. But to, for this, they need new ideas. They need to be able to communicate to the people that you know, it is good to fund science at European level. So one key word is missions. And uh, they asked an economist, Mariana Mazzucato, to prepare a report on this, which was published uh, last month. And it contains uh, several propositions how you should really fund science for the benefit of society. And it is nice that in the first paragraph, when they speak about societal relevance, uh, she uh, writes about, of course, there has been some dialogue be behind the scenes, but she writes about a mission of quantum computing, which could have strong societal impact if it is framed in terms of the potential to enhance cyber security, improve industrial processes, or support the development of new types of healthcare services. Of course, this is not a mission of quantum computing. What she really means is quantum technologies, okay? So this is sometimes a problem that, you know, from outside, people do not really distinguish completely, but important is that all the aspects are in there. So <clears throat> what does it mean that what could be next could be quantum missions? And here there is an important question, which is purely political, but uh, it's very important for us is, does this mission thing mean that we just will have our flagship replaced with the word mission and nothing will change? Probably not. Does this mission, this would be a danger uh, thing, mean that they erase flagships, and this is also something that we have heard in political debate, but it is no longer on the table, and we don't know what will happen. This would be very bad. It is also not going to happen. The current orientation is that our quantum flagship can give rise to missions in the sense of, you know, goals such as men on the moon in the next decade. So goals which can be communicated to citizens are relevant for society, are a result of the technological basis that we create in our flagship and have a timeline attached. And so here are some examples, which also are in this document that uh, uh, you received. For instance, this is something which, which uh, Matrucato herself was saying, and also commission services are looking at, building the first quantum computer in Europe or creating a pan-European quantum uh, secure QKD <coughs> backbone, and having accurate navigation for autonomous driving, or for healthcare, you know, diagnostics. We saw uh, several talks yesterday about this. In terms of simulation, developing, and this is maybe even more long-term, or at least comparable to, the, to building the, the uh, first quantum computer, you know, developing new materials, so no chemical compounds. So, <clears throat> big ambitions, and then, of course, there is a, an important question which is looming around, which is where does the money come from? Okay, so here is the next piece of information, because you are not going to find this information on any official uh, website of the European Commission. However, there is a nice blog in Brussels, which, uh, well, uh, this month had a nice leak from the European Commission, because they obtained a document which sets the draft priorities, which was an internal document by the Commission. And since it was on the web, I can show that to you. And the context here is that right now, you know, second and third weeks of April, Oettinger, Commissioner for Budget, uh, is having hearings with his colleagues to prepare a document which will come up on <coughs> May 2nd to say, okay, let's start the debate on how we should structure what is called the multi-annual financial framework. It is the budget of the European Commission. It is a word that ma many of you have never heard, and it is now the important word, because horizon, which we thought is a big thing, the terminal horizon, which we thought is a big thing, is a very, very, very <laughs> tiny corner of that. Okay, and what we are trying to do is to get, you know, one billion from the Commission, which is already twice as much as they had promised in the first place, in horizon, plus outside of it, okay? So here is the document, and I am highlighting what are the places in which the Commission is already considering to put quantum. One is, of course, point two, the framework program. The other one is digital Europe. This is a new thing. It was not in our uh, before the previous financial framework, and it contains initiatives about artificial intelligence, high performance computing, digital scale, cybersecurity, and interoperability solutions. I have no idea what interoperability solutions are. Probably there are people who know what this is. But uh, you know, some of these keywords nevertheless resonate with us, and I will show that in a moment. And then, of course, there is space. I just saw in the back of the room some very high-level officers from the European Space Agency having entered the room. And this is a very, very good, because they are also going to participate in our workshop on space quantum technologies today. 
So here are how these keywords can be, you know, seen around our uh, small picture here. And those are, you know, European aspects. Okay, so the framework program, the space program, and the digital euro program with those components that I mentioned there. So what I would like to uh, say now is how this connects to our existing initiatives, how this connects to our today's activities, how this is going to enter into the document that we're going to prepare in three weeks to give it to the commission, okay? So to make relevant all the activity that is going to, to be made today, because as much as we have taken in the past the roadmap, which we have elaborated together, and all the input about governance, which we gathered one and a half years ago in Berlin in our community workshop, at the same, in the same way we're going to do today with our working groups, and this is where it is going to, to, mm. to, to fit in. So, <clears throat> of course, the framework program is the aspect about science, and the next breakout session is about the strategic research agenda, coordinated by Rob Pugh. So this is where we're going to discuss the uh, specific topics that we have here. Then, of course, there is a space, and we have a, a um, breakout session on space with participation also of ESA. Um, and we have also connection between these other missions, you know, the uh, European backbone and uh, connects to cyber security and building the first quantum computer connects to high performance computing. And so we have we have been asked, so for each of these, actually, for each of these working groups, it is not something that we invented, okay? So the commission asked us to write, of course, a document for providing community input into what should be the structure of the call, and this is the SRA. The commission also asked us to start a discussion about what should we do in space and how much it costs, yeah? And there is then a cost action, which is, uh, you know, devoted to quantum in space, and they are coordinating, and the is here coordinating this, this uh, um, moderating this uh, discussion session today to deliver to the commission this part, which it have requested from us. Same thing about infrastructure. The commission asked us, please give us some numbers, how much it would cost to create in Europe the capability to produce quantum computing chips, for instance. Okay, and we have the discussion on that. And this is going to take, I, I'm showing this picture, not just to, because it's nice and, uh, you know, or, or I have, I'm having particularly fun with the bureaucracy. Yeah? I'm showing this picture because this conveys a very important message, which is these other initiatives which we are going to preparing which the Commission wants to put in place, it is not by chance that this is happening because Commissioner Oettinger, who started the flagship, is now responsible for budget. It is not just by chance that this is taking place. So what they want is to have additional... Yeah, yeah, they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was not aware it could get this bad. Did somebody call a yes? Yeah, yeah, they did. Yes.
was very effective, but not sufficiently to kill uh, Professor Pugh. Um, so we are going to see, you know, whether that will be the case. But uh, until now, we can proceed. Um, it seems that, uh, and we will know uh, by the end of my talk. Uh, probably he can recall because he is not going to be exposed to the talk anymore. So that that is already some improvement for him. But, uh, um, well, we will know after that, and in case uh, he does not, uh, if, um, does not feel well, then we will find a solution. Sorry for the <coughs> break, but uh, I can speak a little faster and still make it uh, <laughs> in time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for your patience. It is really the first time that it happens. So I don't know if it is a good sign from heaven for our flagship, but uh, OK. <clears throat> Very good. So let me try to regain a little bit of a, uh, focus here. Yes. So <clears throat> what I was trying to say was that we have been asked by the commission to provide bits and pieces, a report on space, the research agenda, a report on infrastructure, also something on education, and come to that in a moment. At the same time, since now we are going out, not only the framework program, but also out, I have been asked by the commission to share this information so that we all uh, perceive that this is not fragmenting, it is rather expanding. And uh, that uh, we can be, the whole community can be involved in such a way that uh, all these pieces do not diverge from each other, but are still converted to the same goal. And this is the reason why we decided, with the, the coordination action, to put everything together in one document, which we are going to work on in different parts, and then give to the commission uh, with this aim. So here are some of the connections that I, uh, that I have shown. And then, well, there is one more uh, dimension, which is uh, early career investigators, which, of course, connects to digital skills, and it connects to the broader topic of education, which also involves the <clears throat> possibility of creating new curricula and the problems. I'm looking, for instance, at some colleagues which are saying, yes, uh, create a new curricula, but we also have to think about the future of those students. We cannot just improvise things without, without any perspective. So this is an important discussion that we have to, to carry out, and there is a, a, um, a group uh, today, a discussion group also on that. So this is the commission side. But I mentioned already uh, the Quantera a couple of times, which you are aware of. So there are several aspects and initiatives from member states. And one is, as I mentioned, Quantera, which is a part of the framework program, and this emanates directly from member states. There are, as well, other uh, uh, articulations of member states which are relevant in this context. And one is Euramet, the <coughs> European Association of, uh, of Metrology Institutes, which is a specific. It addresses one of our um, areas. However, you know, it's a very important one also for uh, economy. And tomorrow we are going to have, there is a delegation of Euramet, which is coming here, and the coordination action uh, uh, is going to have, our flagship coordination office is going to have a, a meeting with them. Uh, and also, I already mentioned the European Space Agency, which is also European in nature, but it's, uh, uh, again, an articulation of national space agencies, which, of course, connects to the space topic and is also going to be present here. And I can very happily announce that we have two delegations, one from Japan, one from the United States, which we uh, I would like to welcome here. And they're going to take part in a, a session on international cooperation uh, this afternoon. So this is the whole picture of what is happening now and how it fits together uh, in, the, in the future developments for the flagship. But of course, this is kind of expensive, right? So the natural question is, who pays the bill? And uh, that's a question which I, I did not ask myself, but uh, the following person asked. So this is a, um, an excerpt from one uh, event I co-organized in Parliament. Uh, and you can see that I invited uh, uh, <coughs> Nobel laureate William Phillips, Bill Phillips here, to participate in that. And the other guy who is in the center of the picture uh, is Mr. Iller, and he is going to be the rapporteur for FP9 for the framework program nine, the follow-up of Horizon. And so I would like you to hear what he said when we were there in Brussels. And of course, it doesn't work because it was tested. But uh, can it be please made work? You recently heard the uh, announcement great. of the Commission willing to spend a billion euro. If I may say, though, um, the Parliament is willing to pay the bill. 
Thank you very much. And you can see that Bill is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so should we be too? Yes. So that's a, a, a not even announcement. Of course, you know, uh, it's nice because it's a nice joke. However, it's also beyond a joke because uh, the point is the parliament is ready to pay a bill of one billion. This is uh, already twice as much as what was foreseen because the flagship together it has been announced as 1 billion euros. Half of it, half a billion, would come from the European Commission and half a billion from member states. Now, the statement from Parliament is we want to give 1 billion, which means not only it will survive, it will go on in FP9, but it will be enhanced still within FP9, and then there are the other components. So it's getting much bigger. And this requires us to think bigger, to think of course, much more application-oriented than we have done in the past, even though there is still a part, which is, of course, not the majority, which is about basic science, but it requires us to be very active in contributing. Because the bigger it gets, the more it appears far away and removed from daily life of scientists, and this would be the most terrible danger. Because if this would be left just in the hands of those people who decide to carry the burden and do the coordination action for you, this would be very bad because important decisions are going to be made and we have to be able to say and be convinced and everybody be convinced that the decision we propose is something that is really carried by everybody. Like the Quantum Manifesto was, which we wrote based on the roadmap, which we wrote based on, on a, a, a 10 or 15 years process and this is the reason why we got so many endorsements there. Our goal as a coordination action is to keep that going towards the new goals, but still with the broadest possible involvement and even beyond the current uh, community, both in terms of science as well as in terms of industry. So this is the purpose of this working document that we have uh, sent to you. So as I said, today's uh, um, workshops are related to that. We will produce, based on the reports from these workshops, an updated version, which is going to be put on the website on April 25th, and we are going to ask you to give feedback in track changes in Word. So I got, sorry for this technical remark, but I got from a few colleagues some nice file with some nice comments on the side, and some colleagues write up to 30 or 40 comments on the side. If you, and we want to take this seriously. So it's not something that we collect and then we do whatever we please and we say, oh, but we heard about what people did. We want to take it seriously. And it is impossible, even for a quantum computer, to take, you know, 30 comments from every one of you and now think, oh, oops, how am I going to formulate that in this text? Okay, this is not happening. Instead, if you send it in track changes, what I will do is I will waste one week of my life as I did already in the past, going through each one of your done changes and try to take up as many as possible in a consistent way. But for this, please, please, please send it in track changes in Word. Okay? It is going to be impossible for us to just consider general comments. Please make your comments to explain why you would like the text to be modified in such and such way. But this is essential to make it possible for your input to make it up to uh, that document. So <clears throat> here I mentioned what I mentioned already before, the qt.eu website. And so here is <clears throat> the uh, web page. Maybe some of you have already gone online. You can look at it. We hired a professional web agency to give it a, a, a look and feel which can be adapted also for the general public but also to give it functionality that we can use in the next several years. The Cure of website, which Daniele Binozzi had put together heroically more than a dozen years ago, has done its job, but somehow it feels a little bit not, no longer up to the task. So this is why we, uh, actually I, I spent money out of previous research grants uh, to, to do this um, so that we can now use it. So please help it. Uh, in terms of giving feedback, as I said before, and you know, uh, providing us with news, providing us with input, and also we are going to ask for input in terms of articles, text, 
and videos in order to advertise and share information not only within the community but also with the broader <coughs> public. So here's the timeline of what is going to happen. <coughs> now we have this kickoff meeting. May 2nd, the Commission is going to make the proposition, the proposal for the multilateral financial framework. And then we have one month <coughs> until they put together the proposal for the next framework program. So this is the time in which we have to deliver to them at the beginning of this time window. We have been asked, I have been asked by a couple of cabinets to please get them the opinion and input from the community. So this is what we are going to do now, and this is why we are having this tight deadline. So the rapporteurs of the different groups are going to be asked by next Tuesday, I think, to give us a track change version of that file, which you will then all get. It will be on the website, and we will ask for a further round of feedback. So <clears throat> then, October 29th, I already mentioned it, the kickoff in which the um, announcement will be made, or maybe it will already be known, but let's say the, the big uh, celebration, including with the policymakers, and um, high-level representative of industry. So we will have Commissioner Gabriel, possibly Commissioner Moedas. It will be uh, an event of the Austrian presidency of the Council of the European Union. And we have a uh, keynote talks by Anton Zeilinger, president of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, and by Thierry Breton, the uh, CEO of uh, ATOS, the French company which is uh, developing in, that, in, um, in quantum computing. And then we are now in the process of selecting uh, gathering and selecting proposals for a quantum technologies conference, which was in the past the QIPC conference every two years, and now it is going to be the QT conference starting this coming spring, and I have already had some discussion with some colleagues who might be interested in, in doing that. Okay, so this is today's context. There is also one discussion group, which I have not mentioned, it is about governance. And the reason I am going to show in the next few slides uh, so these are slides, as you see, there is the logo of the European Commission on top, because I took these slides without changing them, I'd like to underscore that, from a presentation which the European Commission has given uh, in the flagship Board of Funders, which is the body in which member state ministries are represented. The Commission gave this presentation to show how they plan to take the proposal that the High Level Steering Committee made, chaired by Jürgen Linek, who is uh, sitting here also today with us and will participate in the panel discussion at the end of the day, how they take it and how they want to change it. And uh, really, it speaks for itself. So this is why I took it. I am just going to click through it, okay? So here is the proposition of the uh, High Level Steering Committee. There is on top, of course, the program owners, the board of funders, yeah, which is the commission of member states. And then there is a steering board, which is similar to the uh, current uh, or past, I should say, High Level Steering Committee. And then there is uh, the coordination action, which is, you know, flagship coordination office. It's us, okay, making, uh, proposing communication and making sure that communication flows uh, throughout the whole structure. There is a, a, a science, a scientific advisory board, which we proposed, which would be, you know, with like Nobel laureate level people, like independent people who can say who should, what should be the next direction and advise on that. Then there is the science and engineering board, which is going to be the coordinators of the funded projects, which are going to be selected in this call. And as you see here, the quantum community, meaning all of us, is you know, broader than that. And we proposed, the High Level Steering Committee proposed that this is part of the whole governance. Because as soon as the projects are going to be uh, selected, what would be very bad would be that the people who are not funded in this round, that they think, oh, that's not my thing, okay? I don't need to waste time for this, so that's it. This would be very bad because we would fall back instantly, if this would happen, into the closed club flagship, which we have criticized so much in the other flagships, which we have fought so hard to avoid here. But if we would miss this broad community involvement, then it would be the projects which are funded, and they will just define what is the next call, and then it will be a self-sustaining cycle. So it is essential, and this is not just our opinion, but also the opinion of several governments, member states, that the quantum community must be involved. And again, with quantum community, I mean academia and industry. So this is the proposition that we made to the commission with our report. And now comes the fun. So the first thing is 
Well, uh, the advisory board disappears. Okay. Then, the role of the flagship coordination office, well, is not so broad. And of course, all decision making is made by the uh, program owners, of course, which is the people who give the money, the European Commission and the member states. And now, look at the following. The steering board is not really a steering board. It's an advisory board, because the decisions are made elsewhere. Then, well, you know, the coordination action, no flagship coordination office, flagship coordination office disappears. There is a coordination action, which is, at this point is still in the middle, and does networking and coordination. So the most fun part comes now. So the implementation, of course, is the projects which are funded. So let's see what happens. Coordination action goes away to the bottom. Science and engineering board with the projects, okay. And then, whoop, community away with it. So again, this is not an animation that I made up. If I made it up, I could not, not have made it up in a more effective way to represent really what is the direction that this is taking in the eyes of the commission. So we are now at a stage in which member states have the possibility to give feedback on that. And according to information I have, member states are giving in, uh, feedback in the sense that there should be really some involvement of the community. So here is the final slide by the commission, which says, okay, there are several bodies here, um, which are the same that I described before. And at some point there is the community over there in parentheses, but without a specific body, without a self-governance body in the structure. Yeah? Uh, and the coordination actually is somehow uh, down there. So what we propose is just one simple modification for consistency. Each of these functions that you see here has its own body in the governance structure, which the commission proposes. So what we do is we propose just to have one body which represents the voice of our community. So this is, some of you uh, uh, have already heard about that. We called in the current coordination at the beginning, we called it Network of National Quantum Coordinators. We agreed with the commission that uh, this name should be replaced with a different name, which is Quantum Community Network. And I think it is a better name, as a matter of fact, because it has the community aspect in it and the networking aspect. And this contains, is made up, I will show you the list of names now, maybe I can already show it, um, some prominent person from each member state. Um, and these are people who have a broad connection with their community. In several cases, they have been you know, endorsed, elect, nominated by their community, and also they have a direct connection to their government so that they can represent this trade union uh, between the community and the uh, decision-making bodies. So until now, this has not been done with a formal election process, because until now, it was only an informal body inside the coordination action. We are going to make it much more uh, um, you know, stable and endorsed in the next round. Yesterday night, we had a, a meeting of this body. Um, we expect that in June, this gets approved by the Board of Funders. And yesterday, we elected uh, a chair and a deputy chair uh, for, for this body. And the deputy chair, we elected, uh, yes, sir, Omar. Yes, sir, can you, if you are here, can you please stand up? Yes, so here is yes, sir, Omar from Portugal, the continent network member from Portugal. And as a chair, we elected myself. Uh, and in order to avoid excessive concentration of everything into one person or one institution and so on, I am doing something which several colleagues were a little bit surprised when I announced it, which is I am stepping down as coordinator of the next coordination action. So the current coordination action is lasting for one year. There's a future coordination action. I will show you the, the people who are involved. And I am not going to coordinate that. And some of my colleagues said, oh, Tomado, what are you doing? Because if, you are, uh, if your only role can be chairing possibly this uh, QCN, well, then maybe uh, people will not elect you. And then you disappear from the picture. And, uh, uh, and I said, uh, I think it was, it was uh, 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 our colleague Philip Chamas from Serra, who very wisely told me that, you know. And I said, well, uh, and he of course agreed immediately, that's exactly the point. Because if we have a structure in which there is any reserved seat, any space, which is from the beginning, no matter how many dozens of years of his life one has 
wasted for making this happen, but if there is a reserved seat, which is not based on consensus, then the whole thing is not going to work. Then the whole thing is going to be very unhealthy. And so in this spirit of rotation in coordinating these things, uh, I step down as coordinator for the next stage. And in the spirit of you know, community, I am going to say, OK, I am going to be the, the uh, quantum coordinator for Germany. And if and until and to the extent that I have the trust of my colleagues, I will be doing that. And then, OK, we will see. And this can also be something which can rotate. So here I have three final slides, and I am slightly uh, uh, behind time because uh, we had this interruption. Uh, one slide is uh, this one. Um, I have been asked and I have accepted to do this advertisement because I have recently been appointed as editor in chief of European Physics Journal D, which is a European physics journal uh, from the European Physical Society, which is you know dealing with the topics which concern us as quantum technology community. And so the intention that they had in doing this and appointing me there is really to offer a possibility for being a, a platform open to publication of like almost a flagship journal. Of course, there is no such a thing as a flagship <coughs> journal. This makes no sense, of course, no? because it's uh, obviously. But sorry? But it's a physics journal. That is very correct. Yes, so that's a, a very uh, important point. So let's say it could be a starting point because we want to go beyond physics. It should not be just physics. Let's say it is the journal which at the moment has offered this uh, uh, opportunity, and we can, I think, uh, uh, use that. And there is also EPJQT, European Physics Journal for Quantum Technologies, of which uh, Rob is uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, editor. Um, and well, okay, so this is just something to bear in mind as in background information is a possibility again of expression for our community. So here I have two slides. Uh, with the people which I would like uh, carefully, not too quickly, to stand up <laughs> in order <coughs> to preserve uh, the situation, not, not to have another interruption. So these are the faces of the current coordination action. So Rob is out uh, at the moment, Thierry de Boucher from Thales, uh, Frank Wilhelm from Zarlana. Please stand up and turn around so people see your faces. This is Frank, this is uh, Thomas Strom from Bosch, and this is Daniele Binozzi from from, uh, uh, well, Trento, but uh, uh, hired from Ulm. And those are the work package leaders for the current coordination action. Those are the people, this is the team of people which are going to share, is going to share not only organizing today and leading the discussions on the different topics, Thomas on governance, Frank on education, Thierry on innovation, uh, and Daniele is taking care of the whole management of the, of the, of the coordination action altogether. But they are also the people to which we are going to increasingly delegate dealing with these matters in the future. And here is the next one. Uh, so please sit down and please slowly uh, uh, stand up. The other people, so Rob is still <coughs> uh, uh, out there, but Rohir from TNO, um, who is an RTO, Research and Technology Organization. And then we have also Philippe Chomaz, whom I mentioned before. Uh, from COA, and COA is both an RTO and a research organization. You see, we are trying to diversify also the organizations which are involved, not just some physic, uh, physics academics. Uh, thank you for, for that comment. Then there is uh, physics. No, please uh, keep uh, standing up. Um, well, then there is Chiara Machiavello. Where are you, Chiara? Yes, please turn around, show your face. She is <coughs> uh, dealing with the training, research, and education. She's an academic, also National Research Council in Italy. And the um, coordinator is going to be Marcus Wilkens from VDI, Foundation uh, Technology Centrum. Uh, and one of the reasons why we appointed him is that uh, he created and he is in charge of managing the secretariat of one organization which is, to a certain extent, a role model for us, which is the Platform Photonics 21. This is the first reason why we uh, uh, decided uh, that they could take it up. And the second reason is that. Uh, uh, even though he is not currently acting, uh, he's not, his job is not as a scientist, he's uh, thinking very much, and his organization is thinking very much alike, like us, in the sense that the, with the same community spirit. And, well, essentially, the other thing is that we, you have been used in the past to have coordination actions just with academics, but now we are going to a next stage in which it makes a lot of sense that, uh, you know, somehow people who professionally do that are taking care of that, but still with a very deep connection and the same mentality that we are having. So that's why uh, this is the next uh, coordination action. Uh, please, thank you, please sit down. This is a proposal 
so we cannot say anything about the outcome of the evaluation, but I can share with you one objective fact, uh, which is that uh, in the last call for coordination actions, there has been one proposal for a coordination action, which is QT flag, and I do not know what would be the outcome of the evaluation. However, this is the objective fact that we have, so there is some possibility that it will be the next coordination action. And so, uh, that's the end of my uh, slide. Show, so let's see if Rob can join us. Oh, no. oh. oh okay. So can anyone please put uh, here a computer with Rob's talk, which I will then give, I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so please, can you, okay. okay. So please ask questions while I am going to look for Rob's talk so that I can give it. Oh my goodness. Any questions? So, yes. Yes. The question is, is the strategic advisory board going to be a follow-up of the high-level steering committee or not? Thank you for the question. I should have specified it more clearly. So, no, it is not going to be a, a direct follow-up in the sense it is not going to be the same people. Uh, the commission has not yet <laughs> nominated it. The commission has announced its uh, intention to uh, ask to make a smaller group and uh, all, again, mixed uh, academia industry and also to ask some of the former members of the Halevi Steering Committee who are not involved actively in research projects who have a conflict of interest to join this, this board in the future, okay? So that's what they, they have announced, but they have not yet uh, uh, done it. What we are proposing, uh, another important detail, is that the chair of the QCN, uh, the Quantum Community Network, and the chair of the Science and Engineering Board should be permanent invitees into the Strategic Advisory Board, in the sense that they will not have voting rights, but they can participate in discussions <coughs> in order to bring the voice of the community and to convey back, because this Strategic Advisory Board will meet a few times a year, but of course the community needs to have more intense activity. Any other question? Did I answer the question? Thanks. Any other question? Yes. Uh, so you, you showed this kind of larger ecosystem with the mission to, to space and infrastructure, but I kind of missed a uh, connection with, with the healthcare board or maybe the material science chemistry part. Is there anything foreseen? So, <clears throat> so what is foreseen is that, of course, these topics are going to be present into our flagship activities within uh, um, FP9. However, there is no uh, really health program at the moment in the maternal cancer framework in which the commission is planning to deploy directly quantum technologies. So that's the, the reason why it was not there, not because it is not a relevant topic, it will be a relevant topic, but uh, you know the other formal parts of the program are these other ones. I should also underscore, again, in terms of, you know, there's this digital Europe which has some topics, maybe sensing and metrology, for instance, is not one of the aspects in digital Europe. Does it mean that sensing and metrology is going to get less money? No, just the contrary. Because the fact that we are expanding in other domains means that part of the pressure is relieved. So what we have to deliver with the one billion now most likely because Parliament has, we cannot uh, take it for sure because Parliament has to prove it still, but um, what we will make with the flagship money will not need to involve, for instance, infrastructure work, which was foreseen in the beginning, but now is likely going to uh, get money out of other parts of the budget. So in this sense, the part of the science, the flagship, in this sense, would go a little bit more to be identified as let's say, the science part or the technology development part, if you wish, and the deployment would be outside of it in this sense. <coughs> there is a question here, it seems. Thanks. I'd like to have a question about your slide where you have the timeline for the flagship, the ramp-up phase. Yes. And um, so 
what is your vision on the will there be a new next calls for new projects or will the yes. existing project get expanded or renewed so there is going to be a call for, for new projects if the first calls in fp9 what the conditions for that are going to be in the sense what will be the role how much weight is going to give that you have already been funded this is still open for discussion it is a question for the uh, strategic advisory board it's also a question in which the qcn can give input there are pros and cons in the sense that on one end it is clear that we want uh, uh, an open call at the same time it would uh, be uh, probably not uh, efficient if we just threw away everything that has been done with the first call so there needs to be some connection how this is working these are uh, the questions that we are going to, to answer in the next stage Tommaso, i'd like to come back to the question um, on healthcare the previous one because we've learned yesterday that nephrology and sensing is one of the areas where we expect the, the most early results so far so is there and you explained nicely today that in order to, to, to get really a funding from the EU you need to connect to these missions is there a mission on healthcare I, I, I seem to remember something like that so yes. what I put I can't connect to what that. I put uh, on my slide were hypotheses of possible missions because the Commission does not want to fix missions a priori then we have a process which is still quite vague and actually i should say quite criticized from parliament even at the moment how the commission is proposing it how they will select that so what i put there was a few examples of what could be missions which of course i have discussed with them okay what could be missions and one of them is ultra sensitive diagnostics for healthcare now will there be a mission in this direction this is going to be one of the things which the commission has to decide the next stage as a matter of fact parliament would like the commission to fix the topics or some of the topics in advance and uh, um, commissioner Moedas does not want that and this is one of the aspects of the file but in this context uh, like two days ago i got uh, an sms uh, in the night from the first assistant of the vice president of the iter committee which is the committee in the parliament which is approving fp9 and she said i cannot believe that okay we are here discussing with Moedas the commissioner about the timeline for the next framework program how we have to approve it just in very general terms and commissioner Moedas said we have to do it very quickly because we need to not lose the advantage we have in some research areas for instance quantum technologies this is the next big thing okay and we have to do that and a lot of parliament members were saying oh yes quantum technologies i know we have to do that and they were sitting there just to discuss in very general terms the whole framework program okay so uh, that gives me the feeling and, and this uh, woman told me this is unbelievable i cannot believe that but this is happening so there is really a strong support parliament would like quantum technologies to be there and then to which extent will it be fixed the title of the missions and when this is part of the ongoing discussion so maybe a solution for that would be that um, healthcare is just suggested as a topic as well here in your working document <laughs> by the people who like to have it. Absolutely. Inside. This is going to happen yeah. with utmost certainty because in the uh, working group on the SRA, there is a part on sensing and, and metrology and within sensing, this is most likely uh, going to play a, a, a major role as we have seen yesterday as you correctly yeah, exactly. reminded us. Cool, and that's the one going forward. That's one example of how we are using today's event to really bring some sensible meaning into the whole process so that it is a process which has you know some good aspects and not just some bureaucratic situation there is a question over there max is uh, very fit so you can see why i hired him as my program manager <laughs> thank you very much Tomas. so this is Rikis Avramopoulos. i'm from the technical university of athens i'm actually on the board of stakeholders of Photonics 21. So maybe I will bring you a little bit of uh, <coughs> or if you like thoughts or maybe concern. Uh, I fully understand, and I think everybody does, what you said about the uh, effort to try to be open or not to be a closed shop. Uh, I guess 
and looking at your presentation, you had a slide about the network community, the quantum network community, which essentially will be the governing or the uh, consulting body towards the commission and the funding uh, organizations. Uh, I'm not sure if you have looked at the CVs. You said that several of these people are renowned quantum scientists. Um, given that this will be a controlling body, and if it is restricted to just quantum people, isn't there a danger that, after all, people from associated areas, let's say from classical electronics and classical optics, that can actually help realize, in the end of the day, uh, the infrastructure? Isn't there a danger, if these people are missing, that then, essentially, you will end up with a closed shop? Yes, there is this danger, and this danger is connected to also what Stephanie said when, when she made this remark about the, the journal, which, you know, she said, oh, but that, that's a physics journal. And the point is exactly that we want to reach out to other communities which can contribute, and that's, you know, uh, engineering, which is connected to part of what you were saying. So this is a danger which we will always be present. And how do we manage that uh, danger is we manage that with a, a good process in which in each country we identify someone who will be acknowledged and supported by the, the whole community which is relevant for the flagship, you know, and which also will have a mandate to speak for everybody and with everybody. So certainly not someone who just covers the interests of uh, just some part of the community. So uh, this is why I'm saying what we did is the first iteration, we could not do this too open and too official, because otherwise the commission would have just blocked us, okay? I did it in this way to have it as initially an internal body of the coordination action, so it is in the contract which they signed, and so now it exists. And now we are discussing how to extend it and give it a more prominent role. And in this process, we discussed yesterday night with Marcus Wilkins, the next coordinator of QPlug, that we are going to have a process which you know, is as much as uh, uh, safe against these type of risks, which are very important. Thank you. Any other questions? There are no other questions, and I have five minutes to give Rob's talk. Uh, so thank you for your attention, and here is Rob's talk. So <clears throat> this talk has the purpose of explaining to you, so I will really do it quickly because I don't want to take too much time really from the uh, um, discussion, and I do not know what is in this talk, so I will look at the slide and comment on them. Uh, and the purpose is to uh, really explain what we are going to do in the next breakout session. So uh, here is a little bit of history. So it was called not quantum technologies, but QIPC, quantum information processing communication. It started in FP5. Then we had a, 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 a session in the QIPC conference in Rome where we started writing the roadmap. And then there were several coordination actions, uh, and here they are listed, which dealt with it. And QSA is the last one of that. And I'm looking at Daniel because we are together in each single one of these then coordination actions. Anyway, so here is somehow a little bit of the history of how this came about. And here is how the predecessor of this strategic research agenda working group was structured. We called it, and this is, was again Daniele's invention, virtual institutes and virtual facilities. So we had a small expert <coughs> groups, here are the names of the people, um, which were uh, responsible to give advice for calls to the commission whenever needed on these different topics. Uh, five topics uh, which, are, uh, which included the theory there, which then did not make it as a separate area in the research agenda, but uh, rather as a uh, um, uh, horizontal uh, cross theme, and then the horizontal cross themes of control and engineering, which are still present, and they are reflected in today's um, discussions. So <clears throat> the way in which this worked is that these virtual institutes put together and constantly updated a roadmap, which is very big. It is uh, more than 150 pages, out of which we distilled the quantum manifesto which was propagated via the QROP website. Now it is the qt.eu website. And this was really something which was taken up uh, in the final report of the Halevest Steering Committee, because the Halevest Steering Committee really listened very carefully to this advice and made it 
its own. So there are eight pages in the strategic research agenda, which was the basis for the current call, which come from there. And now uh, the point is we have to update that, we have to update the strategic research agenda, and we have also to initiate, to involve industry in the driving seat of this process. Because until now, this was a scientific agenda. Now it has to become a scientific and technological, a scientific and industrial research agenda. So <clears throat> this is uh, uh, what will be in this uh, slide. Let's see. So yes. So this is, oh yeah, that's right. So there is a, an evolution from the virtual institutes to, as you can see, a slightly different, but essentially very similar structure in the research agenda, which is the basis for today's working group. And then the structure is uh, here. Here is where, where the uh, BS has been replaced with basic science. Uh, there was a version of this slide in which basic science was actually in brown color and it was written BS. We thought it was not very helpful. So, <laughs> uh, so this is um, now the structure of what we think for the working groups, that in each of the working groups there should be different people, experts in all of these different dimensions, as well as industry. So all together, I think, 35, 40 people, they are not just writing whatever they please. They are working like as your slaves. They are the editors. They are gathering their antennae, gathering input and formulating it. So combination of people from previous VIs and other candidates also proposed by the, by the QCM. We have a very uh, a dramatic problem there, which is uh, uh, there is, I think, at the moment, one uh, uh, female colleague in this. It is a shame. It is, I would say, even worse than average in, in our field, which is already very bad. So uh, uh, Rob is planning to address that imbalance uh, aspect. And then we also have in the QSA a task on gender equality, uh, which is going to uh, uh, cover all aspects, not just the strategic research agenda. So we are forming a working group, and some of these colleagues are also in the next coordination action Q plan. And uh, if you are interested, uh, please let Robert know uh, about this, uh, uh, your interest in this. So the goals of the working group for the strategic research agenda is to have a, a, an ambitious but achievable research agenda, which takes into account not only science, but also technology and market, and update also technology roadmap and formulate and update technology roadmaps, and also give input to the commission in terms of policy proposals when they ask us. And typically they ask us with an advance between 36 and 48 hours, okay? So, uh, so this is the timeline on which we have to react. But if we have a well thought document, we can just extract something and give it to them when they need it. And also to the help assessing the technology readiness levels and key performance indicators for the for the flagship. So, and also, you know, uh, be a basis for the input for the for the uh, web portal. So, uh, the the problem, the point is. We are going. This uh, the this will be a, a way for the community to give input into the whole process in terms of updating future initiatives, developing, and so on. Because the flagship will evolve, and we want to be sure that it evolves with our contribution. Of course, the commission will steer the process because they own the program, but uh, we want to to do that. So, what is the working mode of this? Let me see about that. So, <clears throat> well, we are going to have events such as today, workshops, discussions. And then the outcome will be summarized and consulted again. What the next appointment is after the um, Vienna event on the 29th of October. On the 30th, we are going to have another workshop consultation for this. And then there will be the big quantum technologies conference in the next spring. And so <clears throat> these, there will be also not only at the flagship level, but also at the level of specific domains. So uh, we will announce our consultations with the new website. We will set up a structure which will enable us to do that, and then uh, in the same way when we have to give input to uh, decision makers, okay? Uh, and so we prepare this in order to be able to react when the commission says, and can we have please, so on the education, on the education, just I want to tell you this, on the education, so they called me, I was in Warsaw at a cost action meeting. So I was in the taxi, I sit in the taxi at 1 p.m., I get a phone call from the quantum technologies unit, the head of unit says, can you please give us a document about perspectives for you know, developing education in quantum technologies, you know, for, but not a small thing, for a few hundred million euros. Uh, I say, okay, uh, I will consult with my colleagues. And he said, and by the way, could you do it by 5 p.m. today? <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. So Frank Wilhelm, I called him in his hotel in Los Angeles. It was before 4 a.m. And then I called Christiane Koch, who was in Vietnam on holiday, okay? 
and several other people around Europe, and at 5 p.m. we had the document. But it was a little bit difficult because we didn't have it previously, which would have made it easier, okay? So this is why we are having the big document here, which will make it easier when the next time the thing comes. So it is a lot of work. Oh, yes, I think I already argued that. Uh, this is the whole community. The working group is a small part of it, yes? There is also the QCN, the national programs, and there are different connections uh, which, which run through them. And then, well, the SRA is an editorial body, if you wish, that takes this. If you want your ideas and you want to be involved, contact your Ponto community network member, which you find on the list that I showed before. And in case you have not photographed it, you will find it on the website because this will be published there. So these are the breakout sessions, and I am three minutes late for that. But uh, these uh, are the, the, the rooms for that. This is really the last slide, as I can see. So uh, uh, these are the rooms. Here are the, the uh, facilitators of that. And here are the points which you need to discuss. Please read them. What are, what are we missing in terms of big picture? What are we missing in terms of emerging technologies? How do we define an industrial roadmap? And um, what are the challenges for the community? And what is missing? What are we not yet taking into account? Okay. And always we are trying to have one academic and one industry person in each of the discussion, apart from the basic science, uh, in which we have one academic and one giant of quantum science uh, who is going to moderate that session. So um, that's it. This was the last slide, as I have seen. Okay, so I, I go back so that you can take a picture. Uh, we are four minutes late. Sorry for the delay. Uh, any questions about the mode of operation of this? Comment, a comment. Remarks. Why don't you take a microphone? There were a couple of remarks, said Max. Yeah. There were a couple of remarks why um, certain aspects, certain like healthcare or uh, certain sensing technologies or so were not in the document we distributed and where we wanted your feedback. So maybe you could make one more time clear the, inter the interplay between the SRA roadmap and this document. To make it clear for everyone, I think this is so good. Uh, well, yes, that's right. Okay, so the document we circulated is a completion. Okay, so the big, big, big thing is the SRA, these eight pages which are in the report and which are going to be updated. Let's say the first half is the first breakout session. Okay, the content. The document you got is everything else which is outside, which is, does not deal necessarily with specific content of the application areas, but it deals with different measures needed to realize this vision, okay? So the whole thing is strategic research agenda plus document you got, but we just didn't copy and paste because, I mean, for you getting, you know, 15 pages instead of, of eight wouldn't make any difference because the research agenda is already published and we are not changing it yet, but we are going to do this today. Okay, so the first breakout session is about the research agenda, which is the part of the HLSC report, which you can download, and you have not received it as a Word file, and the second part of the breakout sessions is about the Word file that you receive. And they together come into defining the input that we give to the commission to make one big fat flag sheet. Yes. I probably need something, but the education disappeared now from this uh, horizontal line. Uh, the education disappeared, yes, yeah. that's related to that question, because here we are going to just, I'm saying just what happens in the first round of breakout sessions, which are the ones about content, yeah? And then after lunch, there's the other round of the breakout session, which is education, governance, infrastructure, and so on. It's complicated, I know. <laughs> Imagine I have to do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, everybody happy? Please stand up slowly and go to your room and have fun there until the break. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, we actually have a break and then we go to the room.